let me tell you the tale of an emperor who saved Rome from complete and utter collapse. Emperor Cooper the Honest was the emperor of the Eastern Roman Empire. His goal in life was to have his eastern neighbors in Persia destroyed and eviscerated. Unfortunately for him, his dreams could not be lived in this life, but glory and majesty awaited our dear friend Copernicus. The emperor started out his reign with an incursion into Armenia. He was hoping to gain some sort of foothold against his enemies in the east, the Iranians. After a swift and crushing defeat against the Armenian army, Copernicus quickly went and sieged down the rest of the Armenian king's land and destroyed him. With the war finally at a close, Copernicus couldn't move on to more important matters, such as HORSE RACING! That's right, our dear friend Copernicus was a very big fan of the Blues team, and he stuck with them the rest of his life, although they would be... A little bit disappointing for him, that, but that that's perfectly fine, we don't have to talk about that. Now, we finally get on to Copernicus' claim to fame. The reason why this dearest YouTube video is being created. The Huns. The Huns would come into Copernicus' land and demand special privileges upon his council. And Copernicus pondered on it thinking, what shall he do? And he decided that the Huns must be destroyed. The Huns amassed their armies against Constantinople. Thousands upon thousands of men came to fight against the emperor of all of Rome. Thankfully for Copernicus, the Western Romans and the Sicilians came to fight with him against the Huns. Copernicus would have to wait, however, for his friends to arrive, so for now, he was fighting alone. While outnumbered, Copernicus had managed to defeat the Hun armies by separating them, destroying them individually. The Huns were on the retreat with Copernicus capturing city after city, burning them at the stake. In a last ditch effort, the Huns had tried to take Constantinople in order to end. However, Copernicus' armies arrived too quickly for them to do much damage. With the last of the Hun forces being defeated in the east, they decided, instead of surrendering, that they would attack the Western Roman Empire and try to take Rome itself. Copernicus was under obligation, both as an emperor and as an ally, to defend Western Rome from the Hun invaders. So off his army went to destroy the enemy. As Copernicus' army met up with the Western Roman soldier, he was eager to go east and destroy the Huns and push them back, even when their army was outnumbered. However, 
but the Western Roman Emperor had a different idea, and they quickly got into an argument. Copernicus, along with the Archbishop of Eastern Rome, argued that the best strategy to defeat the Huns would be to combine our forces together and to go east and destroy them. The Western Roman Emperor and his marshal argued, however, that the best way to win the war would be through a war of attrition, to let them starve their armies out until at the last moment we can come and destroy whatever's left in the east. Copernicus was left with no option because he needed the Western Roman armies to even have a chance of defeating the Huns. So he conceded, and they stayed in the West while the Huns ravaged the East. After months of bickering, the Eastern Emperor Copernicus finally convinced the Western Emperor to march East to destroy the Huns. The march East, however, was very slow because the Western Emperor was very reluctant to move, and the Eastern Emperor was forced to stick with him lest they be destroyed. In another angering move towards the East, the Western Emperor had decided instead of battling the actual opponents that they were facing, they, he instead sent troops to siege down land that had been taken by the Huns. The Huns advanced upon the sieging Roman soldiers. Copernicus and the Western Roman Emperor's forces met up together so that they could take a stand against the Huns if they ever came towards them. More bickering began between the two Roman Emperors. Copernicus wanted to go in and attack the Huns right away and destroy them, while the Western Roman Emperor was considering going back to where they started and letting them starve their army out some more. Now that they've sieged down some more land, they would be forced to retake it and starve the troops. All of this culminated in Copernicus relieving the Western Roman Emperor and sending his forces to attack the Huns below. The battle ended in complete, total, and utter defeat for Copernicus, and he was forced to flee back to Western Roman troops. When Copernicus reached back to camp, however, he found that the Western Roman Emperor had completely abandoned him and had gone south. The Huns quickly advanced behind them, trying to catch up to them to destroy their entire army. Copernicus knew what he had to do. He set, he set his units to go across the river and go into Hunnic lands, and so that they could reach back into, Bul into Bulgaria. The chase was fierce, some of Copernicus's troops being caught and completely wiped out, but eventually he managed to make it back to Bulgaria, safe and sound with his army, and they retreated back into the cities of the homes. Copernicus was left wondering what he should do after this betrayal. On one hand, the Western Roman Emperor has betrayed him. He has left him to die, and he survived. Should he go back and defend a traitor? On the other hand, he's an Emperor of Rome. He has to defend the Eternal City. What will he do? Copernicus raised up one final army to defeat the enemies of Rome. 9,000 men armed and ready to march up north to defeat the Huns. Copernicus marched through the countryside, destroying Hun city after Hun city that has been taken from the Western Roman Empire. The final battle was about to commence. It was finally time for Rome to destroy the Huns once and for all.
and with that, the Huns had been defeated.